Winspiration, the way to the essential. On UK Health Radio, Winspiration brings wisdom and information for an extraordinary future. Together, we can shape the world we want to live in. So let's get real and create the idea. Be extraordinary. Welcome to another episode of Winspiration Radio. And today we have a wonderful guest and can help you to get more information and wisdom how to create an extraordinary future, especially also for yourself. Today I welcome Linda Proctor from Toronto. And we want to talk today about what we call network marketing or the so-called multi-level marketing. There is a lot of mysterious uh, uh, ideas about it and in the world. And I met Linda, well, I guess nearly 25 years ago uh, when I was involved in a company she was also in and we met in America a few times. Um, the name Proctor is a lot, I guess, familiar for a lot of people. She was married to Bob Proctor and lived a lot of decades with him uh, before he passed away and uh, <clears throat> it was also an interesting uh, life I guess with such a brain and uh, uh, yeah man with this kind of straightness and control of his <clears throat> brain and if I remember the story right um, Linda before she went to network marketing also Uh, was talking with Bob about huh, how could be an extraordinary life, working life be, and from there she came closer and closer to this what they call network marketing. <clears throat> so welcome and thank you Linda uh, for taking the time to share some thoughts and your wisdom about this, what a lot of people don't know about. A lot of people say, oh no, never and millions of people on planet Earth are enjoying this life of network marketing. So can we bring a little bit more light in this, what it really is? Well, thank you, Wolfgang. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm always happy to talk about this. It's uh, something that I've been involved with for, excuse me, the past 30 years. And I've stayed involved um, because I, I love the business. I love the people. I love the community. And I love the good that we do. So I'm I'm always excited to talk about this. Yeah, and uh, it is really interesting. Uh, I remember a quote from Bill Clinton. He said, "Like this uh, network marketing is so the the last uh, occasion, or you say possibility, to really live the American dream of a free life." And that's what I also uh, yeah figure out after with my. Boo, hustle uh, with law and taxes and then changing my life also from there. Um, but you started different. You didn't start in network marketing and uh, you went first in a totally different career. So what what made you really then the change or how do you discovered the way of living like this? Because in a lot of Yeah, schools, you know, don't heard about university, you don't hear about it. Um, so what was your story or is your story with this? Well, I, it's probably like a lot of stories and like yours. I, I had my own business. When Bob and I met, I was selling life insurance. I had gone into that industry because I needed to earn more money. I had a salary job and went into straight commissions and was really struggling. And um, I met Bob in a seminar when I had moved into selling life insurance. I'd actually been in that in that industry for about four years and wasn't really making it. And and, and let me just back up and say that whenever uh, and the, the the knowledge that I gained from Bob in that insurance industry um, really put my uh, increased my income dramatically. But like a lot of people, what regardless of what you're earning, I had no time freedom. Um, the 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 catalyst for me looking at this was Bob had uh, uh, a trip planned to um, the south of Spain and to Amsterdam. He was going to be working for Prudential out of England, um, an insurance company, and uh, they said that they would pay for, pay my way to to be there with him. 
it was first class and and um, I had never traveled at that point wanted to go to Europe and it would have been my first um, adventure in Europe and I said I can't go I've got you know my business requires my my presence and he quoted Michael Gerber who said if your business requires your presence you don't have a business you have a job and I realized that's exactly what I had had I was the the owner but I still didn't have any time freedom based on how the business was running and that's true for a lot of people um, if they're in business for themselves and, and obviously for a lot of people who are employees and he said you've got a bad boss well I was the boss <laughs> and he, and he mm -hmm. said uh, he said you've got to work differently now he had told me that in the insurance industry and it turned out really well um, and so when he said it this time, I wasn't, I couldn't imagine how it could be any different, but I followed his lead and left the, uh, left my business, uh, went with him on the trip, came back and actually sold the business. And then I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but, but he, he, he said, why don't you write out exactly what you're looking for? He said, because that'll really help, help identify it. Well, I put down that I wanted high income potential because by that time I was earning really good money. I wanted control of my time, something that I didn't have. I wanted to be able to work when I wanted to work and from where I wanted to work. I wanted to work with interesting people. I wanted to global business, much like Bob had, so that I could work from around the world and travel and, and do different things. And there were other things on, on, the, on the list, but those were some of the highlights. And when I wrote it all out, I said, I have no clue what it is. Now, Bob's a positive person, but he looked at the list and he said, I think you've described the impossible dream. <laughs> and, um, and neither one of us really knew what, it, what, what I had written down. And it was some time later, he came back from, from someplace and he must have run into somebody in the network marketing um, industry. And he said, I think what you've described is network marketing. And like a lot of people, my initial reaction was to, to say, no, that, that it was definitely not that. And I think that's because most of us see, saw it, at least I did at the time, is just running around um, bugging friends and neighbors and family and, and trying to get them to buy something that perhaps they really didn't want or need, but something that would help me. And it seemed to be very self-serving, at least from my perspective. And I really didn't see how it would, I mean, I, I knew that, they, that all the companies had great products, but I wasn't sure that, that I felt comfortable that I was truly benefiting everybody doing that sort of activity. And he said, you know, there's people who make a lot of money in this industry and people who have not only a big income, but they have residual income. And he said, my suggestion would be that you talk to somebody who's earning a lot of money rather than someone who's not earning money because that's your only exposure in the industry. Yeah. And he's find out exactly what they're doing and see if that changes your perception. And and I did. And and that's really my introduction to, to Oh, it started. Art. Yeah. But yeah. before we, we, we go further with the story, I just want to come back to the point. Uh, so it says, Bob said, write down what you really want. What yeah. what is it? You didn't do it earlier, so just okay. I had four years in insurance business, and what do you think? Why people and it's not has nothing to do with network marketing really, but most people don't write really down what they really really want. Well, I I, I think we do sometimes, but we don't know how to get it. If I go back to when I met Bob in the insurance industry, I mean, forget about going into network marketing, but in, in the insurance industry, I remember talking to Bob in that seminar and and he, and he asked me what I wanted and I gave him an answer. I, I, I forget what it was, but it was a certain amount of income that, mm -hmm. and that's what led me to go into straight commission sales. And he asked me then how I was working and he was the first person who ever said, you'll never earn any money doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, Said, but I'm doing what my sales manager told me to do. Mm -hmm. And he said, sales manager or anybody in your office making any money? And I said, not a lot. And he said, you know, th therein lies part of the problem. Um, he said, you spend more time in the car, you spend more time preparing for appointments than you actually spend face to face with, with, with someone. And he said, then when you get in, in front of someone, you sell them what you, what you think they will buy rather than what they actually need. You don't do the service for them, you don't do the service for your company, and you don't do the service for you. He said, you can't win working like that. And he was the first person that sort of slapped me, you know, mm -hmm. um, mentally upside the head and said, you gotta wake up. I, I don't think a lot of people experience someone like Bob who wakes them up. We get on a treadmill and we think if we just keep doing, something is gonna happen and, and, and it's gonna be okay someday. 
and we and we just keep doing the same thing and the same thing and the same thing and 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 nothing changes and and bob really sort of woke me up and and got me to look at at my life and that i that i that he was correct in what he was saying that i needed to really make a lot of changes to 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 change my income and my income changed dramatically i was earning i think close to twenty five thousand dollars a year and i'm probably exaggerating a bit when i met bob um, and after um, him working with me a little under two years, I was earning uh, just under a half a million dollars. That's a huge jump in income. But but I was working with better habits. I was working with a better presentation. I you know I had changed a lot of things that he pointed out that I needed to do that no one else had. And and I think that you know it really speaks to I sort of, I know that this is off topic, but that not only do we need a goal, but we need a mentor in most cases to really help us to help us uh, make the see what changes we need to make and make those changes. Yeah, so for sure, it's, we always need someone because we all have blind spots, um, <clears throat> and uh, especially to also the Bob teachings, we know that uh, subconscious can't really see is it real or not real. So what we think, we start to believing directly and acting like it. Um, but there was one sentence also you said um, they don't know what to do and what uh, Bob did at the moment was a wake-up call in this way that you start to reflect what you were doing and then you could see it's not really matching then the other point is um, you need to have an idea what you really really want and you can have goal setting without knowing um, what really will be the plan or what to do and and you changed also a lot inside but maybe the sales manager told you only do this do this just but not really the personal transition um making yeah the life the day different because also talking about with a client about higher numbers <clears throat> uh, that is a, a difficulty <clears throat> to do and uh, <clears throat> Um, as I had the privilege also to, uh, yeah, be after we met in the uh, industry, um, I met Bob also, and we had the privilege and also to be friends. And I learned a lot from him and can call him, yes, like I said, friend, but also a mentor. So I learned a lot from him about uh, the belief. So <clears throat> coming coming back. Um, to this, uh, what is it really that you need to have a plan, or what is it the personal transformation you uh, did there? I think there was a main thing that you also dared to work and, and to change your habits. Um, so, what would you value looking back? What is more important to get an idea? What is on the outside, or really changing inside? Well, I think it starts with an idea. I don't think without a big idea you're going to change the inside at all. Um, but but what most people ha happen is that they choose an idea that they believe they can they can accomplish, and so usually it's not something that really motivates them to make the changes. And that was one of the reasons that Bob talked about that there's three types of goals. Um, and you know, one is where it's a level goal; it's something you've already done, and you're just doing it. Perhaps, and perhaps it was a, a new car or something, and you and you're just getting another new car. So it's it's something you've already achieved. The next level of goal is is something that you think you can do, that you can you can strategize. If I do this and this and this, then then I can have this. But the, the 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 kind of goals that are really inspiring and that Bob encouraged people to step out are the ones that we don't know how to reach. And and what happens is when you set a goal like that, you hit what Bob called a terror barrier. And you really need some help going through it. I remember when I started my financial services business but prior to joining network marketing that um, I I started I started working and and things were going well and all of a sudden I realized I wasn't sure I could month after month bring in enough business to keep the business um, in in the black and I I got scared I went home one day I crawled into bed literally pulled the covers over my head Bob came home later and he said he said you know 
I, uh, he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm scared. I'm afraid I've made a big mistake. I'm afraid that I put our life, our financial life in jeopardy. And I don't think I can do this. Now, what I wanted Bob to do was to, you know, to, to, to cuddle me and say, it's okay. I'll, I'll take over the business. I'll look after it. And then once I get it running smoothly, you can take over. But if you know Bob, which I know you do, Wolfgang, that's not what he said at all. You know, he said, sit up here. He said, you have two choices, as I see it. He said, one, he said, you can quit doing what you're doing. He said, I'll close the business and, and uh, I'll support you because I love you. He said, the other is that you can uh, make a decision that you're going to go back into the office in the morning and I will mentor you, but I will not do it for you. He later said that was the toughest thing that he ever had to do because um, it would have been real easy for him to do it. But I realized after, and, and obviously I chose the second the sec second option it wasn't the one that was the most comfortable but i really didn't didn't want to close the business and i didn't want to do nothing and so um he said later that it was the toughest thing he had to do because it would have been easy for him to do but i realized that that I would never have been able to go into that office and, and run it. That I had to grow into the person that I needed to be. I needed to I needed to go through all of that to have the to, to uh, develop the knowledge and the skill and the confidence to be able to run that business. And and so I think that when we step out to do something new, even if it's something that that is network marketing that has very little risk because it's stuff we've never done. We hit that terror barrier. We hit the, we hit this, I, I'm not sure I can do this. I'm not sure that it's for me. And, and our brain starts making all sorts of excuses, things like that. You know, it's not the right time. It's not the, you know, all mm -hmm. sorts of things to, to keep us where we are. And uh, fortunately, I had a great mentor who, who walked me through all of that and helped me understand that what I was experiencing was normal, that, that our paradigms, our way of, 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 of our, our routines that we have fight to stay those routines. They don't want to change. Um, they, they want to keep us right where we are. And so um, it's important to acknowledge that because nothing that we do that's new is going to feel, is going to feel comfortable. Yeah. And it's... Uh... Yeah, as a society or in the companies, like you mentioned, your sales uh, manager, he was not really interested to make out of you a totally strong, independent uh, woman. So they just, uh, um, we live, yeah, unfortunately, in most homes the also. Was he wasn't a strong, independent man either. Yes. So. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe he wouldn't sit there. <laughs> yeah, that's right, correct. Yeah, that is uh, always uh, the problem. And... Uh, <clears throat> Um, in the English world, uh, speaking world, is also this employee and self-employed. It says by words, you're still employed. Yeah, so you're still working. Someone is telling you what to do, but now you do, need to do it yourself because you're the boss and the employee. And nobody really learned learned that. Um, but the transition, what you then did, and there you can then start to talk about business, like uh, like Bob also said. You don't have a business yet. You have a job, yeah? and and that is a big big difference to be a business owner, an entrepreneur, or just emotionally also an employee, even if you legally self-employed. Um, and that is a trick with the brain again. Um, what is really the truth? And so the wake up will see all the, the truth, and and then make your decision. Great. Um, but uh, coming to network marketing, and I see also a lot of people not really making it in network marketing, and we just had the insurance business uh, or other businesses, it's everywhere uh, uh, through the business world. If people stay in the emotional uh, employee mood, they can't run a business. So it's just not network marketing is how the people think, tick, and are trained. Sure. I mean, if you look at the number of people who go into real estate, the number of people who go into, you know, insurance industry, the number of people who go into just anything that has to do with being somewhat, either somewhat self-employed or totally self-employed, the, the percentage of people who actually 
um, do something in a big way is small and not because other people can't, but it's because they, they in, in a lot of cases, they lack that mentor. They lack that, they lack the, the, the person that tells them you've hit the terror barrier and that's okay. This mm -hmm. is, this isn't, doesn't mean you should stop. This means you just need to learn some things to keep going. And, and that was really important counseling for me when, when, uh, when I hit that chair and I, and I hit it all the time because I'm constantly trying to, to do something in a bigger way. And, and and, and anytime you, you you step out to do something different, you are going to hit a terror barrier. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is, like yourself, um, I'm sure you just come to expect it, and you know it's coming. You just you just don't know necessarily when or where, but you know that if you're stepping out to do something different, you will hit that terror barrier. Yes, yeah, because um, if we are not aware, and when we are young, we can't be aware. We we create an image of ourselves, and then we follow through to keep up the image. So every morning we go somehow in the memory and the past and say, okay, we live the same thing again. And now changing, and if you have identified with it, means giving up your identification and that feels like dying. Yeah? It's not just terror, it can be <laughs> sometimes, yeah. ooh, um, until you wake up and see that it's just the illusion and uh, be happy to get out of the illusion and uh, say, oh, no, I'm free and can yeah. do it what like like kids every day could do something different um because they were not identified they don't have the memory yet huh? mm -hmm. yeah no absolutely yeah. for sure and that is exactly mm -hmm. what you said it, it doesn't matter how successful someone was uh, somewhere and now coming to network marketing doing something new they can be scared again <laughs> oh uh, uh, this is and if i understand you right um now, with this experience, network marketing for you is not just about making money or big money, even if that is wonderful. Um, exactly this point, how to free people or, or develop people or give them the chance to to grow. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I, I think that, that every industry or business that I've been in up to this, it was always about helping people. I got into the insurance industry after my first husband passed away. And I really knew at that time the value of life insurance. Um, I knew that it was something that people needed. Um, I, I was young. My husband was young. He was 28 when he passed away from cancer. And and I didn't necessarily need a lot of insurance, but I could see that if we had had children or, or other situations, that, that it would have been something. So I was really sold on the idea of what, what I was um, attempting, at least in the beginning, to, to market. Uh, when I had a financial services business, I really wanted to show people how to, to help structure their life in such a way that they were able to save, they were able to prepare, they were able to have you know, the things that they wanted. We helped a lot of people uh, start a business. A lot of our clientele were young uh, medical professionals, a lot of them chiropractors or dental um, folks coming out of dental school and stuff like this. And so we helped them set up their business. And I really got a lot of satisfaction from doing that. And I think my challenge with network marketing was that I didn't see it as something that was helping people. I saw it as something that would only benefit me. And when I sat down and talked to the person that Bob suggested I speak with, I realized that that wasn't what my perception wasn't correct at all, that it really was about helping people make a difference in their lives. I think the challenge is that there's a couple of ways you can do this business. A lot of people do it where they just move product and they just focus on moving product. But what this gentleman that I spoke with, um, that Bob suggested I speak with, he, he showed me that there's a way of showing people how to create a, 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 an additional income stream and a significant one and one that can be residual. And I didn't even, don't even think I knew what that meant. But there was a lady um, that was on a call, I believe, that, that uh, he invited me on. And she had been a piano teacher and had never earned a lot of, of an income. Um, and, and yet she had earned quite a bit more in network marketing. She was married and her husband got really sick and she needed to step back and take, take care of him. And it was probably for over a year before he passed away. And her testimonial was that for that whole year, her income had continued to come in even though she wasn't working. And she said, I don't know how many businesses you can have that, that can provide that sort, of, that sort of security for you if you build the business correctly. And so there were testimonials like that that really 
really got me to see the business in a different light and the good that it provided and really sold me on um, the, the, the real benefits that, that, can, that can come from this industry. And um, I was at that point pretty much all in. Oh, that's a very important uh, uh, point, especially though in the COVID time. Um, I think a lot of people experience it, what the difference is. Myself, uh, a lot of other business like seminar businesses or whatever was from one day to another was shut down, but the income from network marketing uh, carried me easily through all these uh, difficulty, uh, difficult times. So that was really interesting. And like normal employees have often a hard time when kids uh, have a basketball game or whatever, can you come to this and that, daddy or whatever, mom? Uh, and they says, no, I have to stay in the office. Um, and I remember once uh, um, someone quit a good job and says, why are you doing this? Uh, he had just a young child and says, I wanted to see my child growing up. Um, and here I can, the what do you call triumph freedom, but also uh, work on my time, what is a schedule I, I do by myself. So that is a, a kind of freedom. But you also say, um, um, yeah, one part is a product, uh, but the real thing is what we are selling is more a kind of personal development. And, and it's just... <laughs> Absolutely. I, I've often heard network marketing described as a personal development program with a comp plan. Yeah. And... Uh, and and that and I think that's true because you really you know you you develop yourself you 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 I think that this industry pulls the best out of you you learn skills that perhaps you don't learn in other industries um, you learn how to reach out and talk to people and have good conversations about helping them the people the people who do the best in in this industry are not the people who are the best salespeople they're the people who come from uh, backgrounds that are very compassionate like teachers and a lot of social workers and 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 things like that people that really enjoy helping people and this is a helping people um, a business not that salespeople can't do well but I think it's not just about sales it's really caring for people and helping whether you're talking about the business um, or the product but it's 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 it, it's uh, you you learn skills like that you learn how to how to make pres to make presentations both uh, individually and and on stage um it, you learn um I, i've learned so many different things that that uh, uh i i don't know that i could i could name them all but it, it's it's a growth business you really you know if you really want to uh, build a big business it, it requires you to to uh, to get creative and to uh, work cooperatively with a lot of the people. It's not a, I can't just, um, as you can't, we, we can't just think of ourselves and what we want to do. We, we have a team that we, um, that we work with and, and a team that, that we rely on and they rely on us. So it's, 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 uh, it, I love, I love the team effect. Yeah. And, and, and you can create a, a real team, like in, in companies, you're often forced to work with people. It's not really a choice uh, by free will. Um, and uh, when you talk about team or a group of people, I, um, I think also it's a huge benefit. Um, Nobody is really talking so much about it is we come from different backgrounds. The people from different backgrounds. If you're in like an insurance business, you, every day you meet the same people, insurance, insurance, insurance. So that uh, closes you somehow your view of the world. And here come together people with have so different views of the world, experiences. Um, and okay, here in this team we do the same thing, but there is so much more value in all these uh, connections. So that is really interesting. And um, I didn't travel so much uh, when I started with network marketing, especially as a lawyer, I was mainly in my office. Um, we met in America and I, I was coming from Germany and then suddenly you have connections around the globe. So there's a lot of just, by the way, personal development um, and education that is very, very valuable. Just. 
Mm -hmm. Well, just your association with the people from different backgrounds, as you pointed out. I mean, their experiences and their knowledge would be different than yours, and, and you're right. You would never interact with them. I mean, if I look at you know the, the people on the team, um, everybody has a different background. I don't think anybody of the leaders has the same has the same background, and yet we you know we come together and we combine those skills, and those talents, and that knowledge, and it really enables us to 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 build bigger and think bigger and think outside the box because my box looks this way and your box looks this way and somebody else's you know um, knowledge and so when you put all that together you can really be be creative and do some interesting things yeah uh, my world Sophia, this is just a huge kind of seminar and like with some people call it now network marketing and uh, some say also mlm the multi-level marketing and mlm for me stands for my life mastery because it's um, when you talk about big business also, like before in your insurance industry, you need to change something inside to be ready to handle or to receive something big. Right. That you can stand it. With a lot of winner is often losing the money again. And um, so <clears throat> it's a huge uh, personal development possible, like you said, not really risk. The only stress is there the terror barrier. Huh? <laughs> Yeah. Mm. And, and, I, and I think that like with a lot of things, if you really want to win in anything, and this in this especially, you have to take the focus off of you and what you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, that doesn't mean that, that I, I don't have goals and I don't have things that I want personally, but my focus has to be on, on helping other people, helping other people get what they want. I remember that first mentor that I had um, 30 years ago. He said, if you want, if you aspire to be uh, to earn a lot of money, if you can aspire to be really, you know, make a difference in people's lives, you, you don't aspire to be the star, aspire to be the star maker. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that really resonated with me that, you know, that you want to lift everybody up that you work with and help them become the star, help them uh, have success and, and success will follow. Probably like no other business that works in, in this industry, when you help other people become successful, you definitely will, will be as well. Yeah, um, first of all, it's a, it's a personal uh, values and they say, okay, I don't want to hold the people small. Um, I really dare, like they also in the Asians, as they say, the master creates leaders and, and that we can do or is a serving uh, industry, you say. But it's also really, really the, the, um, yeah, the personal strengths you at the personality you grow that you're not afraid that someone in your organization is maybe even stronger or even better you you, you ha can be happy in the normal industry they're all afraid they spend 50 percent of the time holding other people small yeah it's very tough very few dare to work with strong-minded people in a team and in, in the industry mm relish that i mean that's a good thing because i mean i mean it really it that strength helps the whole team it, it's not something that you you're afraid of it should be something that you really want you want yes. to attract people who are who are better and stronger than you the challenge is most people uh, don't 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 know how to how to talk to a person who's better and stronger than them yeah and uh, that's and so they tend to recruit people who are a lot weaker than them uh, but i think as as time goes on and they get more and more confidence in the in the industry and learn how to to have those conversations hopefully they do because that really is what makes the the, the team so much stronger having a lot of of leaders I think it's a kind of normal thing when when I studied law and, and uh, in the end of uh, my university life or when I started really, in, we, we had in Germany the kind of two years kind of training uh, period at, at court or at other uh, <clears throat> um, attorney offices. Um, okay, I was not really for the big deals yet. <laughs> uh, so I also, okay, here's a car accident or is this um, and and you you grow um, but then you see oh it's just my personal view what I can handle my personal emotional system because in the end it's the same thing uh, as here, you file here something you file there something uh, you talk with people and then you realize it's not whatever their, their title then you suddenly work with humans and they're somehow all the same in oh. this way 
I realize that a lot of people looking are like you that that regardless of where they are, what they what they have studied or become in in terms of profession, what kind of income, everybody I believe wants more. I think that's a basic human yes. human trait that we all want more. Um, the problem is most people don't have a big enough want that they're really going to change their habit patterns or look at something else to do. But for those who do, um, this is such a such a, a simple business. I'm not saying it's necessarily easy, but but it's a real simple business because it's 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 um, uh, it, you can do it on a part-time basis. It's something that uh, it's about really showing other people and putting people together that that want the same thing you do, and uh, um, it it can create that that income and that lifestyle. Um, it certainly has for me, and I know quite a few people in the industry. In fact, a lot of people in the industry who who have enjoyed that as a result. But um, it's 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 everybody. I think wants more. It's a it's a matter of yes. how badly do you yeah. want it, and 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 what are you prepared to do to 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 bring in more? And this is an industry that can do it. Yeah, and uh, there's a for me also one important point. Like I said, on Bob was always teaching it. The universe uh, is for expansion, and so we are also. Um, but I see a lot of people because of their upbringing that they are not allowed to live themselves, so they're not daring really to play the true nature and and, and grow up. Right. And um, if you're then in a company or in a sur surrounding where everybody keeps themselves small and don't believe in it or the boss and we're waiting what the boss or the government is saying. And and this is also the big difference, I think, here you can be in a community, in a team, or whatever, where everybody is on the way to be free and then teach you to get rid of the limitations. So, and, and it's happy if someone is growth in their potential. And that gives well, so much permission to do it. Don't you think, though, that a lot of people are afraid of what everybody's going to think? You know, because network marketing, people don't understand it as a group. When you tell somebody, I've gone into network marketing, the first thing uh, some of the people will say, not everybody, is, is oh, you don't want to do that. But I learned a long time ago that that's not a good, a good uh, way to live. When I went into the insurance industry after my first husband passed and, and I really needed to earn more money, I had all sorts of people saying, I really, I had tried to, let me back up and say, I tried to get a sales job for a long time and nobody would hire me because they said I had no sales aptitude. Well, of course I did. I, I'd never been in sales and and um, it, it whatever. But I uh, I persisted and finally got a, a job in the insurance industry. And when I told that my friends and family, they said, you know, we're real happy for you, but we're not going to buy any insurance. We don't need insurance. And 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 other people would tell me everything bad they could think of about the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. And I realized I can't listen to them because I need to do something that will give me more income. These individuals mean well, but they're not going to pay my bills. And I need to make decisions for me based on what I need to do to be able to live the way I want to live. And I think we all need to embrace Embrace that and do that regardless. And and if this is a, a a possible vehicle for individuals, then you need to at least do what Bob suggested I do and explore it and see for yourself, and then make a decision for yourself rather than listening to people who are who are telling you that it's not good or that it won't work um, based on perhaps in, in some cases their own fear of stepping out and doing something different, which is exactly what I was yes. hearing yeah. from with the people in the insurance industry. Yes, yes, but that is uh, normal. They protect themselves, um, and uh, <clears throat> they live often in companies where they also misuse people. And uh, network marketing itself is just a system. Uh, I say like, like a knife, you can misuse it and, and kill life, or you can use a knife to save life. And network marketing, okay, you maybe can misuse it also, um, people. Um, but also you can, like we talked just about, the personal development, strengthen them, teaching them future skills. What I can say from the German standpoint, the school system, they are not teaching them to be free, speak in front of people, sell, lead, running organizations. So just not be the employees are really an independent person. And, and this to... Um, support hundreds or thousands of people to live this and prepare for the future, I think uh, <laughs> the government should pay us for that. 
Yeah. <laughs> And no, it's a great industry with with, yeah. with a lot of benefits for sure. So the other guy I was uh, thinking of is Kiyosaki, Robert T. Kiyosaki, the rich dad, poor dad guy. I think is well known over the globe, and uh, he <clears throat> yeah is teaching his dad what the poor dad, um, even if he was a head of uh, school and teachers, um, but he ended up in the end. Poor with all the knowledge, not big income. And rich dad, he had different businesses and he learned something totally different. And Kiyosaki wrote a book um, about network marketing, but just not about the money. The business school, he says, it's so much more about other benefits than just making the money, what we don't find in other uh, industries, some we mentioned already. Um, you have some more to add, what the benefits well, rather, are? Rather than adding more, I, let me just say that you and I both know many people who, who got into network marketing. They they perhaps did well, maybe not great, some who did great, and, and they left. But they left with, with a mindset that had been greatly expanded as a result of having been in the industry. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they really realized how how they can really write their own ticket to what they want. Yeah. Their mind was expanded and they left and, and, and did well in, in other things. And so I think the big benefit, at least it, it, it is for a lot of people, is seeing that they're that they can build something that is very solid. They can build something that uh, uh, that can last. They can build something where they're helping people and 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 learn all these skills that then you know if they decide at some point that this isn't for them or that they would enjoy doing something else they've got all these skills that they can take with them to 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 do great things in another in another business and even i i know people who didn't do much at all but they came in and they plugged in enough that they that they got the confidence to go out and, and leave what they were doing and do something else so i, I think that the change the, the shift in mindset people talking big um, I think this was the first industry that I was ever in where people talked about what they were earning. I don't think we're supposed to do that anymore with uh, <laughs> with, with different regulations. But they were talking about what they were earning. They were talking about how their life changed. They were talking about the time and money freedom that they have. And there's not many businesses where people have the ability that, that they can personally say this is this happened to me. This is what this is how I benefited from it. And I think that you know that that's that that's huge. That is really huge and that's, I think it's um, I make also the difference between normal and natural and most people don't live a natural life there's a norm life so if someone uh, put up a norm and you have to live it and and like you said there are people and, and I have uh, um, a few examples of self friends who a really good friend who joined me at that time when we started and um, and after a while, he, he discovered a totally different passion. And so, um, and today he has what we call today green tech company. Incredible good stuff what he's doing for uh, humanity. But he said that he could do it. And that because he learned something in network marketing. I have uh, a feedback suddenly came a 20 year old to me and said, because I was with my mom. 10 years ago of an event and learned something and just had a short chat about what to go for in life. Right. From there on, and he listened then to Bob's Goal Achiever uh, years, years and years. And when he was 20, he said, just I want to say thank you because now I have my own company. And, and um, a lot of moms came also uh, sharing then later what they learned in network marketing, how a tree personal development is, they could could bring into the families, so that they were the, teaching the kids totally different, and so there's a huge impact also um, in in other lives, not just for those who are directly in network marketing. And some say it's not so much if you become rich, but nearly everybody is enriched. Yeah? And, and this and that is absolutely that is uh, the key point and they're so miss so I remember it was I guess it was a success magazine um, um, at the time and they wrote 
we were for a while totally ignoring um, the success in network marketing or the millionaires in network marketing because we were kind of blind or ego driven because when they went to big companies with the CEO or the president and then they wrote an article about this person and then there was a little photo me and the president me and the CEO yeah, said the journalist and, yeah. and then he said one day realize because of our ego being in the big buildings and being with the photo and together we totally ignored all the people who did it from home and we never had the idea we need to sit with some <laughs> with a lady somewhere uh, in the countryside in the kitchen and then talking about business and then they opened up and, and shared more so there's a lot of ignorance also about it yeah that is um, well, it's probably ignorance about everything, but but certainly there it is about this industry, and I and I think that uh, you know I, one of the reasons is is because you can get into it for so little money, uh, relative yeah. to anything else, starting your own business. You can do it on a part time basis. You don't have to quit what you're doing, and so when you've got such a low entry level, um, it, I think that it's easy to get in, and it's easy to to quit it's easy to, to to let the paradigms take over the terror barrier stop you and, uh, and and a lot of people do but i think the people who really want something and the people who connect with someone who really understands the business someone whether it's a person who brought you into the industry or somebody beyond that person in terms of up, what we call upline um, if you connect with them i think you'll you'll have a very different perspective and a very different trip in terms of moving forward in the business and so um, it, it's it's uh, it, I think it's necessary that 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 you take that initiative if you join a company yeah, to, yeah. to to make sure you have that kind of a trip in, in the industry. Yeah. <clears throat> Someone once said, "Ah, in network marketing, there are only people who had a crisis in life. Uh, always when they come on stage, they say, oh, I have this crisis, and then network marketing show. Can I join when I don't have a crisis?' <laughs> um, but." <laughs> Um, I can say it also in my life, as long as I was focused, studying, lawyer, so I tried to fulfill what I worked for. And only because I got rid of everything and said I needed to change my life, I was open to, to a new idea of living in freedom. And today it, it reminds me like when, when uh, I was a student and there were kind of pubs and, 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 and bars and was dark light and a lot of people were smoking at that time so when you sit there in the evening um, even with a cold smoke it, you, you get adjusted to this bad <laughs> air and you don't feel it but when you then suddenly go outside and say gosh what a difference what fresh air means and this was my experience also um, after uh, yeah, radically getting rid of all my uh, offices and, and then being in network marketing, I never, never had this free oxygen, the good air now for 25 years to decide what I want to do today, where I want to be, where I want to live, can adjust my place from weather. <laughs> and it's so different and it's hard to explain for those who are kind of, yeah, prisoners or slave, still in the everyday, what you call it, red race, we call it hamster wheel. And so it's about freeing people, really. Absolutely. It, it, and and, and I, I think people have a hard time imagining being able to live in a way that they can make their own decisions about where they live, how they live, what they do during the day. And, and this clearly, as you build a, a larger and larger business and your income continues to, to um, go up, you have those those um, those options. You, you really can decide where you want to live and how you want to live. And, and uh, it's it's it, it, it's a wonderful life. I mean, it, it truly is. Yeah. But to be clear, it has net work, so it's not net hope, net wish. Uh, it's also work, but uh, really, really with uh, so much more self-responsibility and, and freedom to decide. And um, there's a lot of companies out there. Not every company maybe is fitting uh, for you, listener, 
Um, but there are really great possibilities out there. And uh, thank you, Linda, for sharing your experience and uh, <clears throat> that we could just share a little bit our view um, that there are really possibilities out there just in the site and at a time uh, when now uh, artificial intelligence coming, jobs going away and everything, people are afraid. Uh, sometimes you need those kicks from the universe to really go into freedom and there is huge, huge, huge potential uh, in this network industry. L go look for something and uh, find a good one. Can you give Linda, uh, just for, for the end here, just uh, yeah, three points with a, what people should look for to decide? For a good network marketing company? Yeah. I, I think, first of all, good products. I mean, that was um, one of the first things, and not of the first company, but I've been with a couple of companies, and, and the first thing that I looked for after I really understood the industry was I want a company with good products um, because some people do come in as customers, and we're all customers. We're all consumers on, on some what is level. What is a good product? What do you mean by that? Well, a product that that makes a for me, it's a product that makes a difference in people's lives. Yeah. A product mm -hmm. that 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 really impacts them emotionally. That it that it helps them perhaps sleep better or or feel better or you know whatever it might be or look better. Um, you know, when I say that, you know, maybe it, it, it's anti aging type type products, but something mm -hmm. that you can really be excited about because. Um, I, I think that when you're mm. emotionally attached to the products and, and you talk to people about about that, um, it's going to come across a lot, a, a lot Linda, different. Linda, very and, fast, two, two more points. We need to end okay, this session. Okay, no problem. And I, I think you want to you want a, a company that uh, uh, where you can see mentors, where you can see people that you can uh, learn from and grow from. That you're not just following your neighbor, but but that somebody that can actually help you succeed in it. And I think you want uh, a company for me, a global, a global company, so that I could travel and, and build wherever I wanted. So um, those are would be some of my top three. Thank you, Linda, for taking the time to give some from your wisdom to everybody and the listener. Please, please know there is always a good possibility out there to create for yourself an extraordinary life. Be inspired. This was another episode of Winspiration Wisdom and Information to support you getting out of illusions, false identifications, limiting beliefs. We all have the power and potential to be more, do more, have more, give more. Reality is what is possible in the universe and the best is yet to come. If you want to dive deeper into possibilities of creating the extraordinary future, go to inspiration.global or to wolfgangsonnenburg.com. More information and some free downloads like the email program Dream Goals Reality or a copy of the book The Best is Yet to Come can be found on the UK Health Radio website under the Listen on Demand and Presenters section. Join us again next week on The Winspiration Show for more wisdom and information to create your extraordinary future.